Hey, what is happening everyone? Welcome back to another video and today we'll be checking out the gaming performance on the Xiaomi Mi Notebook Pro. Now if you're someone who watches my channel, you'll notice a boost in quality. We are no longer using a camera to capture the gameplay footage. We now have ourselves an Elgato HD60S. So, we have finally got ourselves one. Uh, it's pretty costly, but hey, anything for better quality. Anyways, without further ado, let's get right into it. So as always, we're going to start off with some casual competitive games such as Rock League. So here it is. Now, the performance you're going to see overall on all the games here are much better than the Xiaomi Mi Notebook Air 13. Yeah, that's a long name. Now, of course, that's not going to be the case in all the games here. Uh, there has been driver updates, Windows updates ever since I did my last test. And there is also a thing that this laptop came with, and that is superior thermal performance and I have been impressed very impressed by its thermal performance on this laptop but that out of the way I'll get into more detail in the full final review but yeah here's Rocket Lake it's performing very well 53 year average and a maximum of 96 you're going to be having a great experience it's not choppy it's not laggy there's no lag spikes the game is just buttery smooth and the game looks pretty nice. Now something you notice about the settings that I have chose in these games is the most likely type of settings that you might have. And it's pretty much a balance of graphics and performance. So for story based games I'm going to try to get more of a 60Hz and for games like CSGO or competitive I'll try to get something higher over 60 so we never drop below 60. In the case of CSGO you're most likely going to have medium settings and uh, 1080p or less depending if you're a competitive person and most players kind of like to play on medium settings and that is actually because it's easier to see enemies but the performance here you're going to actually notice that it's much higher than the previous KB Lake and that's probably thanks to the CPU as well as the thermal performance so there's not a whole lot of throttling going on. Moving on to Overwatch, the game still looks beautiful on low settings at 1080p with 100% scaling so there is no loss of resolution quality but the game still looks gorgeous and very very playable. The uh, performance on it is fantastic. I actually forgot I was playing on the laptop and just over recorded actually. But yeah, very impressive, very enjoyable. Moving on to PUBG, a very very unoptimized game and very heavy game. It doesn't matter what card you have, what CPU you have, you're going to struggle running this game no matter what you throw at it until it's optimized. The game is in early access of course. So in this game you want to have the best drawing distance you want to see as far as you can. So what I've chose for the settings here, I'm going to put them on the screen. Basically uh, 1600 by 900 I believe at 80% scaling on lowest settings and the only thing that was turned up was actually the render distance and everything else was on low. Of course you can tweak the settings to your liking but these are the type of settings that I found to be best when running this game. Overall 52 average and the game has never dipped under 30 FPS which is surprising and a maximum of 67 and I've actually played two full games on this laptop. One of them I got to third place and I was taken down and that is because I couldn't see far enough and that was when I was running the game at 720p and that's what made me go ahead and bump it up to 1600 by 900 to get that extra drawing distance. But that's that if you want to play PUBG you're going to be able to do that. Uh, moving on to Fallout 4, you have to run it at lowest settings, 1080p. It's an old engine that is kind of revised and reworked. It's not optimized very well. That said, these numbers are from the heaviest part of the game, which is Diamond City. And I would actually recommend playing this game at 720p for a much more enjoyable experience. Here's a game we actually test out for the first time on these type of laptops, and that's Batman Arkham Knight. Here we have it at low settings, 720p, average of 50 frames per second. That it is indoors and outdoors, it's a mix of both. Overall, not the best performance, but the game is definitely very playable, and you can definitely have a great time with it. We've gone to Doom, and now we are running it at 1080p, lowest settings with OpenGL, an average of 37 frames per second, minimum of 31. Overall, the experience was also very playable, and there was actually no jitter or lag whatsoever. Moving on to Bioshock Infinite, a pretty optimized game, running at low settings 1080p, and the game overall is just gorgeous, as always. And once again, the game is very playable, with an average of 73 frames per second. Moving on to Borderlands 2, running at 1080p high settings with an average of 57 frames per second with a minimum of 35. Overall, once again, the game is gorgeous looking, very playable, and it's running at 1080p, so everything is good here. And now we move on to Battlefield 1, running at low settings at 1080p with an average of 54 frames per second. Once again, it's actually very playable, very enjoyable, and moving on to Star Wars Battlefront, we are running it also at low settings at 1080p with an average of 57 frames per second. And finally, we have GTA 5 with normal settings at 1080p. Now, normal settings in this game are pretty much low settings, but they just call it normal. With an average of 66 frames per second and a minimum of 52, the game here is actually very, very enjoyable. In fact, I think this is the game that I enjoyed most on this thing because it just runs beautifully. The laptop is an overheat. And overall, running this game on this laptop is a dream because this thing has some amazing speakers, great performance, and overall, it looks beautiful. So yeah, this is the game that I enjoyed most on this thing. 
And that is actually pretty much it for the games that we have tested on this laptop so far. We might have more later on, maybe in the full review. That said, these numbers should give you an idea of what this thing can do. But I'm probably going to test out a few more games like Tomb Raider and I'll add it in the description below and let you guys know what the performance is like on this thing. So to sum it all up, this thing has been greatly improved over the previous Air 13, 2017 and 2016 editions. Those things kind of get pretty hot really quick, but this thing has been improved in performance, temperatures, and acoustics, believe it or not. The fans here are not that loud, and I was actually using the MSI laptop to record this footage using the Elgato capture card, except the MSI was ramping its fans up really high, and it was actually pretty annoying. And after I turned off the MSI, it was just peaceful again, and even though the Mi Notebook Pro was under load, it still stayed under very, very acceptable acoustic levels. The fans don't have a high-pitched noise, and when the fans do spin up at 100%, it's actually not that annoying. It's actually pretty calm and um, pretty acceptable, I gotta say. Very impressed with the thermal performance. But yeah, that's actually pretty much it for this video. Right now, I'm just finishing up my battery test on this thing. And so far, I'll tell you guys right now, the battery life has also been improved. So look forward to that as well. And yeah, that is actually pretty much it for this video. So look forward for the final review. We'll have my final thoughts on this thing. I've actually been greatly impressed after testing it thoroughly. But yeah, in overall, a fantastic laptop for both work and multimedia. So thank you all for watching, hope you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful, if you did hit the like button and subscribe button like this and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care everyone.